What's up everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you haven't already, make sure to hit that subscribe so you don't miss out on a single video. So this is a recap of the 10th episode of the seventh season of Teen Mom OG. There were quite a few filler scenes uh, to start off this episode, so I'm just gonna skip them and jump on over to when Tyler and his mom are talking at his home. So Tyler's mom comes over and he tells her about how stressed and exhausted he's been lately, including how miserable he's been as well. And he also reveals that he's been suffering from insomnia so his mom suggests that he starts taking sleeping pills to help him get some sleep because she feels like you know if you get more sleep you're able to deal with the rest of your life a lot better you might just be suffering from sleep deprivation and so Tyler says that he doesn't want to take sleeping pills instead he wants to go to some sort of a treatment facility uh, but so I guess his mom seemed a little bit like worried like what are you suffering from depression anxiety as well like are you thinking of the same kind of facilities that Caitlin goes to and so Tyler assures her that that is not the case he just wants to go to you know some kind of mind body soul retreat just to get himself back into alignment and be able to better run you know the rest of his life between the show his wife the daughter and the business that they run so the so his mom asks so you know why don't you just go you want to do it you've got the means why don't you just go to this sort of thing and so he's like well I can't exactly like I've got a business to run like I'm fulfilling orders I'm doing all these different things and his mom asks him whether or not he thinks Kate would be able to handle it without him and so Tyler says if I'm being honest no I don't think she'd be able to handle it at all which is true because Caitlin herself suffers from a lot of depression and ups and downs and on top of that just seems to be a really lazy person so I would not trust her with a business of mine either Amber and her homeless baby daddy are still out in Hawaii and this time they are in a van en route to talk to one of her producers who I've never seen before and he offers her a drink of a pineapple flavored like pear and she tries a little bit of it and she's like you know what this is gonna make me sick and so he's like oh yeah I forgot uh, about the baby I was like well you only just found out about this baby a couple days ago and you already forgot like that shows how excited you are I guess so they pull up and start talking to the producer and Amber reveals that her dumbass is pregnant and she claims that she wasn't surprised because she was off of birth control I found that to be really contradictory because in the voiceover um, while it was just her and Andrew in the van, she was talking about how they were in shock and the shock had just worn off. So that's why they were going to reveal the news to producers. So, you know, what is the truth here? You were shocked one minute, the next you're not shocked because obviously if you're not on birth control and you're letting every Tom, Dick and Harry raw dog in you, you're probably gonna get pregnant at a certain point, right? Um, so she reveals the news to the producer and you can just tell the producer was like, how was this girl so damn stupid? And she, you know, she just really looked really irritated with the whole thing. And she thankfully asked just to make sure that everybody who's watching this knows how stupid Amber is, she asks, how long have the two of you been together? Because remember, a lot of Teen Mom viewers don't, you know, watch vlogs. They don't read the blogs or anything like that to know about like the BS that goes on behind the scenes. So Amber's like, yeah, almost, you know, three months we've been together and you're already pregnant. So it's kind of like, you know, how many days did it take for you guys to do this? Because that is absolutely mind-bogglingly dumb again the producers like wow that was speedy and amber says well i can't do anything right and you know what amber you are damn right truer words have literally never been spoken so the producer claims to be happy for amber as they wrap up the scene but you can just tell she is like this girl is so damn dumb and i actually feel like she seems like one of those people who worries about the reputation of the show and what they're promoting because at a certain point they all have to wonder hey we're here doing a show that we claim helps decrease pregnancy rates unplanned pregnancy blah 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 amongst teens and really really young adults like even 20 21 year olds or whatever but here are all our stars too stupid to understand basic birth control and safe sex in general. A person that you don't really know like that should absolutely not be shooting up your club or raw dogging you in any capacity. Like you don't know this person. You don't even have your results back from them. Like. Uh, the whole thing is disgusting. I don't even want to know what their medical records look like because it seems like they just have like an easy pass on their coochies. Like anyone can just go in there with no kinds of protection. It's just have at it, have at it. And it's absolutely disgusting. Amber actually calls Macy to break the news to her, but Macy missed the call and she calls back Amber. And that's when Amber reveals to Macy that she's pregnant. And for some reason, Macy is excited for her, which is really weird to me because Macy's got a deadbeat baby 
daddy who, you know, is a drug addict. Kind of like how Amber is a drug addicted, deadbeat baby mama. Some people say she's a former drug addict, but you know, we all have our different opinions, right? So to me, it's kind of like, Macy, you would not be happy to find out that Ryan, you know, was out there having more kids, knowing that he's such a terrible father to the one that he has. And his one kid that he has wants him to be a good father so badly. So how are you happy for this deadbeat woman who's about to, you know, bring another poor child into the world to neglect? It just didn't make any sense to me. So when she got off the phone with Amber, she seemed excited when telling Taylor as well. And Taylor seemed like, really? With her new boyfriend, he seemed really apprehensive about everything. And I don't know why Macy was so happy for Amber. She seemed like a genuinely good mom called her and told her she was about to have another baby, you know, with like a steady partner that she's been with for a long time. Not that this like loser called her and told her she got knocked up by a guy in like three and a half weeks. You know, I just didn't understand Macy. You were too responsible to be so happy for this idiot. I would have just been like, well, that's an interesting life decision. What do you say to that? I'm not the type of person who could like gas up my friends with like, you know, BS. If they're being stupid, I let them know they're being stupid. In Michigan, Caitlin, Tyler, and Nova are in the car and on the way to a photo shoot for their clothing line. And Tyler just makes it a point to tell Caitlin about how he's kind of been suffering from insomnia later, uh, lately and stress. And you know, he just has not been able to sleep. And so Caitlin kind of just brushes it off. So at first I was like, okay, like I could see why she brushed it off and just was like, you know, I don't know what's going on there. I hope you get more sleep because he kind of just mentioned it like as an off comment, but then he proceeded to mention it a couple more times and she didn't like take it as seriously as it seemed that Tyler wanted her to, right? Like he just kept going, I'm just so stressed. Like I'm really not sleeping lately. And she just kept going, oh, well, hmm. And then like Nova would say something in the back and then she would just focus her attention on Nova and then Tyler would bring it up again and then she would focus on Nova again instead. And so I did feel pretty bad for Tyler, especially considering how much of a caretaker he's been to Caitlyn for years. It kind of seemed like he really wanted her to kind of pay attention to his own needs, you know, for once in that relationship and he just wasn't getting it. So he decided to kind of just recline his seat and take a nap on the ride there. And Nova was just talking to him, talking to him like, oh, daddy's sleeping. And he just seemed so drained and exhausted. Did. And I, I kind of felt, you know, a little bit bad for him in that department, but maybe he kind of needs to approach Caitlin like more matter of factly, you know, just to let her know what he's really feeling. Cause sometimes we have a lot of the background info that the people on the show don't. So like, we're able to be like, oh my God, Caitlin, pay attention. This is serious because we saw a conversation that he had with his mom and we understand how much it's bothering him. Whereas Caitlin only just got those little comments from him. So she just doesn't get it from the same perspective that we do. So I do have to give Kate the benefit of the doubt in that scene. Andrew sits down on a porch and talks to a producer about securing the bag. And Andrew claims that the timing of their relationship was just so unexpected and it happened so naturally. You know, he was like, I never wanted to be in a relationship or anything like that. It all just kind of flowed into place. But it's like, hold on hold on you already forgot that the first time we met you you already admitted that you were stalking this girl on marriage boot camp as soon as you heard that she was dumb enough to like give some geriatric deadbeat like over a hundred thousand so dollars you were like i would follow her from room to room you know pay extra close attention she he was probably the dude on twitter that she was talking about before too when she was talking to gary about you know talking to other guys and stuff it was just um stop lying like we've got the footage we know that you forced a relationship with Amber and I am 99.9% .9 sure that money is a motivating factor for someone like you. This heifer continues to claim that he's terrified to be a dad, but that it feels right. You know what? I don't even think that he was saying that fatherhood feels right. I think he was talking about the, the checks he's guaranteed for the next 18 years feeling right, because I say it just feels right. Every time I go to the bank and I see that like there's a new <laughs> deposit in there for me, I'm like, you know what? This just feels right. This is the way life should be. Anyway, Macy and Taylor head out to celebrate their one year marriage anniversary. And she already seems quite snippy with him in the house and just overall stressed. So they head into the limo on their way to the restaurant and they're sitting, they couldn't have been sitting any further apart from each other. I don't know if I'm an overly like touchy feely person or if these two lack some kind of like 
chemistry or intimacy between them. I just don't see it with this couple. So anyway, they talk about how being in the back of this limo kind of feels like, you know, a, a low budget porno or whatever. And so Taylor then drops one of the shadiest lines that I've seen in recent teen mom history. He's like, you know what? Like, I think I remember one of you know, the cast members being in the back of a limo uh, in a porno or whatever, which is obviously in reference to Farah and her old face. You know, that little backdoor tape that she did in the back of a limo with like a glass. You know where I'm going with that. And I dropped out of my seat laughing, Taylor. That was hilarious. And speaking of Farah, she gives her mom, Deborah the task of taking photos of Michael's proposal to, you know, Amy. I felt like that was absolute humiliation, but who knows with this weird ass family. So anyway, to propose to Amy, Michael pulls out his little iPhone and starts reading a roses are red, violets are blue poem. And I would have just been like, you know what? This struggle poem is just is just not doing it for me. Why don't you just say you want me to marry you? Give me that ring and let's call it a day because it was I didn't like it. You know, it was so childish. A roses are red, violet or blue. And you couldn't have even taken the time to memorize it. I mean, really, like we're in the dark, your glaring phone is in my face, your kids over here with a flashlight in my face. I I don't get it, but you know what? She's happy, he's happy, the ring was beautiful. It looked to be at least one carat, and so they're happy, I'm happy, and that's that. Andrew Shure is getting an awful lot of screen time this episode. He and his sweat stains cook up a steak for himself and Amber, and guys, it turns out that that girl pairs steak with ranch dressing. That explains a lot of her issues in life. She then talks to her producer, Kiki, about how nervous she is about her pregnancy and how she's taking it seriously, and drops a really, really weird gem. She goes, I don't know where we're gonna live because I don't want Andrew to move to Indiana because I've always wanted to move to Malibu. But I can't move to Malibu because I have a daughter and Gary would absolutely never let me uproot her life like that. And the conversation ends there. Like we don't find out where these two are gonna be living with this child and it was just so weird. I, I just didn't get it, it was, it was just weird. Like, what? Where are they planning to live? I think ultimately they're obviously gonna be in Indiana because Andrew does not have two coins to rub together alone and Amber cannot leave Leah and just for show purposes. I feel like if they weren't on television, she would have been like, deuces child, I'm moving to Malibu or whatever. But for show purposes, Amber is not gonna leave Indiana anytime soon. So where are they going to be living with this child? Kiki then asked Amber what happened to all the medications that she was taking for her, you know, mental health and emotional health and how that's going with pregnancy. You know, can she take them, can she not? And so Amber's like, I've actually been off my meds for at least a month, you know, because Andrew makes me happy. Your daughter doesn't make you happy? Like this man that you've known a couple of weeks makes you so happy, you're off your bipolar, borderline personality, depression meds. But the daughter that you have that loves you unconditionally despite all your bullshit does not make you happy? Huh? That doesn't make sense. And then she also goes, um, what else does she say? She goes, yeah, so since Amber has been off of her meds, bipolar, borderline, and depression, for over a month because this guy makes her so happy. Why are you still not seeing your child? Like you've been, like your excuse was that you were too depressed, this, that, and the other, but you still were barely seeing your child. You only saw her like a couple of times to pretend to this Andrew fella that you're a good mom of some sort, but even then you were not making a regular effort to see her. So it just really goes to show what a massive piece of S-H-I-T this woman is absolutely baffling. Now, while shooting for Tierra Rain, Caitlin loses the car keys and has a full blown meltdown. She and Tyler just curse up a storm in front of the children and it was so inappropriate to be, you know, just such such a, what is it? A potty mouth in front of children, but whatever. Deborah gets Michael and Amy an engagement dish to celebrate the happy time that they all shared as a family. And she cries happy tears for them as well. She is a better woman than me, that's for sure. I would not be celebrating no ex-husband of mine getting a new wife. Um, she then jokes about how they should have a joint wedding together. Okay, girl, just slow your roll. Farah then brings up David again for literally no no reason she's always trying to like poke at her mom at a certain point it's kind of like give it a break 
Farah. You are pushing 30 years old. You've got your own child. Your mom's got her own life. Like this should not, yeah, like maybe he's a shit person to you or whatever, but you're not living with them anymore. So just leave it alone. She's not gonna leave him. So just minimize your time with her or shut the heck up about it. Back in Tennessee, Macy and Taylor arrive at the restaurant and um, Macy tells Taylor that she does not want to birth another child. But Taylor says that he wants another child and she says that she would rather adopt, which uh, Taylor actually agrees to. They say that they want to adopt a child between the ages of four to six. And then after that, she then goes, or maybe you could do both. Like, I'm willing to have another child then if you want, but if you want a child, then it's got to be, you know, ASAP because I'm not waiting too long anymore. And I was kind of sitting there like, huh. Macy, your excuse, the last time you accidentally got knocked up was that a doctor told you that you were barren. And so you got off birth control because you know, your PCOS that you allegedly have would make you barren and, you know, have all these infertility issues. So how are you not concerned at all here over dinner talking about, oh, if you want another child, let's do it ASAP. Taylor even said they get pregnant quick. Um, I just, you know, like what? a lot of times these girls are so contradictory that you don't even know what's true, what's not about them. She literally raised no concern about whether or not she can get pregnant. Like she was just like, I don't want to, but if you want to, let's do it ASAP. Taylor's like, okay, but you know, as soon as we start trying, we're gonna get knocked up. We get knocked up quickly. So it's like, do you have a fertility issue or do you not? Things then take a bit of a drastic turn when Maisie tries to lure Taylor into talking about the miscarriage that they had and he leaves to go to the bathroom and she eventually spills all the tea to a producer and gives out the baby's name and everything, which understandably pisses Taylor off because um, you know, it turns out that he never even got the chance to tell his family about it. I felt like that was so unfair of Macy to do because this is a loss for him just as much as it is a loss for her. And it's just not fair to share that information with a bunch of strangers before your husband is able to share that with his own family. Taylor then reiterates that he doesn't want to have this conversation on camera and Macy kind of pushes the issue again by being like, well, this could help someone else watching, but you know, he hasn't even told his own family, so the last thing on his mind is what a bunch of strangers will get out of his story. Because honestly, 90% of it is just entertainment for us. There are people that they do help, but uh, a really good portion of us literally just watch to watch. You know, we're out of habit. So I don't think that that was something that she should have pushed so much because he was so visibly uncomfortable. And she's like, are you mad? Well, duh. Next up, Amber and Andrew sit on the beach and talk about the pregnancy. She says that she's confident about everything because unlike the others in her past, Andrew's not an asshole, he's not using her, and he's got his own career and goals. The look on his face, though, said otherwise, LOL. Now, Tyler goes to check out the new house with his mom, and they again talk about all the stress and insomnia he's been dealing with. Guys, why are two people who are so stressed out, so miserable, so desperate to have another child? Literally last episode, they were talking about how much they wanted another baby. Caitlin was out there taking out her birth control, whatever, IUD I think it was or something like that. So why do you guys want to have another kid when you're obviously both suffering from serious mental health and emotional issues? It just makes no sense to, you know, subject another child to that. Like it's just, it's not fair. It's selfish and it's downright stupid too on your own part like you already know that you're not in a good place emotionally mentally neither of you are so why do you want to bother like another child with that I just don't understand their logic they seem to have no logic for anything whatsoever they're you know what I find about people a lot of people seem to just have kids to have kids you know like they think of kids like neopets or something where it's like oh so long as I have money to feed it clothe it and give it a house you know everything's all good but no that's not exactly how it works works you should have like a certain capacity to be able to teach your kid and rich your kid and like set them up to succeed in life and these people literally with all the money they have don't seem to have the capacity to give kids more than the bare minimum because they themselves are so stunted like intellectually emotionally like mental like on every single le uh, level and it's frustrating but moving along Tyler's mom claims that his success may be what's stressing him out and Tyler says that he does not see himself as successful which she calls some sort of self-esteem issue instead of reality you know Tyler's mom what's her name Kim something like that Tyler's not successful per se like he hit the jackpot on an MTV reality show and he's got like some kind of clothing line that he launched like two weeks ago, you know, and like 
a book that he probably had a ghostwriter for and if he didn't it's probably full of typos like he's not successful he's just lucky and i don't think that him acknowledging that is him having a self-esteem issue it's more like him being self-aware and realistic about his life but anyway she does apologize for anything she might have done in his childhood to cause his issues nonetheless and she starts crying about it which was very sweet and then tyler assures her that she was a great mom and he drops a really good gem which is that you know what Everything can be traced back to whatever happened in childhood, but at a certain point, you as an adult have to own what you're doing and where you are in the present and where you wanna be in the future. And I was like, yes, Tyler, that is absolutely true. You guys, that concludes the 10th episode of the seventh season of Teen Mom OG. And as usual, I'm more excited to hear what you have to say about everything. So please make sure to leave all of your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below and we'll chat. You can also like this video, subscribe for more, feel free to share with your friends as well and follow me across social media where I absolutely love chatting with you. That's all for now. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.